Good evening, everyone. Uh, this meeting is being video recorded and broadcast live on Penfield TV's government access channel, which includes Spectrum Cable 1303, also online at penfieldtv.org, and social media platforms Facebook and YouTube via Town of Penfield Television. Following the proceedings, the video recording will be available on the town's website and on streaming devices Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. You can uh, search for Penfield TV in your device's app store and it is free. Uh, if anyone wishes to address the board uh, on any public hearing matter tonight, there's gonna be several ways you can do that. Uh, public participation opportunity, opportunities will be provided following the applicant's presentation and any questions or comments from the board. Uh, for those watching the meeting live, you can call in. This number 340-8771 or you can uh, send in an electronic um, submission uh, via the town's uh, website at penfield.org. Uh, we certainly encourage anyone that wants to participate to do so, and then obviously we'll invite anyone in the audience to come up and speak as well. Um, <clears throat> each month we like to um, let folks know that um, the town uh, goes to really great lengths to make sure that people in the community are aware of what's gonna be on the agenda so that people know uh, more about their rights to come in and speak about an application. And the town does this in several ways. Uh, one way is they mail postcards to people that live or own property within a certain vicinity of the application property. Um, they post the, the town posts the agenda on the website. Um, and it also, uh, as we've all seen before, it. Uh, it was a requirement that the applicant put the signs up on their property. So when you're driving by or walking by, whatever the case may be, you, if you have follow-up questions, you want to know what's going on, you can certainly call. Um, so we, th we think that's helpful. We certainly welcome anybody's input because it helps us sort out the issues and do our jobs, and we appreciate that. So we'll uh, start tonight's meeting with a work session. We have an agenda here. We'll take care of any unfinished business we have from the last meeting, review the minutes from that meeting. Uh, once that's done, uh, we will have the public hearings. We'll invite the applicant to come up to this table and give us uh, his or her name and address for the record. And then likely what we'll do is we'll have board members walk the applicant through the issues on an application. Everyone is submitted and is required to submit a written application. These are all pretty thorough. Uh, maps, uh, documentation, environmental documentation. So we just find it more efficient to be able to have the board member lead the applicant through the process. <clears throat> Once we're done with our exchange, as I said before, we'll check to see if anybody's calling with a comment or question or anybody submitted anything electronically and then we'll open it up to anybody in the audience that cares to speak about that. Um, with this all being said, I'd ask everyone to uh, rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great, thank you very much. And uh, let's go to approval of the minutes from the last meeting. We've all had a chance to look at them. Make a motion to approve as written. Second. All right, we have a motion to approve and a second. Any further discussion about the minutes? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I don't think we have any table applications. No. Nope. Wow. Hallelujah. <laughs> Quite efficient last month, I guess. All right, so let's launch into tonight's public hearings, Andy, please. Christopher Sobolewski, 3408 Atlantic Avenue, Penfield, New York, 14526. Requests approval for an area variance under Section 250-14.3 of the code to allow a taller fence than permitted under Section 250-7.1-D1 I, I of the code at 3408 Atlantic Avenue. The property is currently or formerly owned by Christopher Sobolewski and is zoned RA-2. 
SBL number 110.03-1-10.1. This is application number 24Z-0017. All right, thank you, Andy. If we may have your names and address for the record. My name is Christopher Soboleski, 3408 Atlantic Avenue. Becky Soboleski, same house address. Mm -hmm. Hi, thanks so much for coming in. Um, so you put together a great application, wanted to give you an opportunity to just kind of walk through the high point. So looking for a fence that by code, it can be six feet tall. Um, so looking to kind of double that and make it 12 feet. Um, you had referenced the need for that because of privacy and safety were the concerns. Yes. Um, did you want to expand a little bit more on what no, that meant? No, our main concern is privacy. You know, unfortunately, where our neighbor's house sits, their whole front of their house, their master, their children's bedroom upstairs, their living room and their kitchen, dining room area, face our entire house, my bedroom, my children's bedroom, and my backyard. So, and the way that it's positioned and it's sitting higher, you know, unfortunately, we had to go that high. Um, our neighbor wanted, we, we, both, we have both talked about putting a fence up for privacy. We started putting it up and we're like, geez, we are not getting our privacy on our end because we're the way, the way we're positioned. We're much, so we, much lower. We mm -hmm. kind of just kept going and um, we paused just until we got this situation. We tried to, you know, fix it with our neighbor. He planted some evergreens for him because he wanted more greenery um, on his side of the fence. Um, and he added more for, for his purpose, but. We tried to make it look log cabinish too. Yep. And and well, it's for gonna the feel of the of the ho of the area. The, he has a log home. We live in the woods. He milled all the all the wood himself. You know, my it's hard because like my neighbor has the privacy now. But if we cut it down, then we don't have the privacy. And so is that up right now, or correct. is this just a rendering? So that is the full twelve. Correct. Well, because he we both we, they agreed on putting a fence up for privacy. So we started, but then. That our neighbor said that he doesn't like the way it looks, and I, you know, unfortunately, I don't know what to do to have the privacy. I can't always just have all my house windows shut all the time. Mm -hmm. I was so we're also here asking for a variance to keep it just in that area where the houses are for the privacy of my family and my children. I was also planning on standing at the color of their house, so it looked really nice with the landscape, and it kind of matches ours as well. Just, just to be a good neighbor. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned the slope of the yard. Mm -hmm. Did you measure how much of a slope that is between, how much higher up does his house sit than your house? The elevation? Yeah. Um, the, well, the, the point of reference is the inside of our windows to their, their windows, their children's windows, um, and the fence, just covers from from the sight lines, just covers the access from their windows to our master. Mm -hmm. So that way if we open the blinds and we happen to... And the boys' bedroom and yeah. my back sunroom. Yeah. Um, it, we've had to keep all the windows and everything shut because the entire, their entire house faces our backyard. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we really had no privacy in. There was a fence there before. We just were going for more of a privacy one. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and we were both in agreement to have some type of privacy. Um, I, I think, I mean, he's going to get to speak, but I, I think, you know, he wants it about two feet lower. And so we're only really arguing about two feet um, at this point. Maybe three. Feet may, maybe three. Our privacy. Maybe three feet. Um, but, again, the sight lines are, are what's, you know, from the windows, that's the main concern. Um, for yeah, for now, that's, that's it. yeah. And I guess from from just the the charter of this board too is looking at the significance of the request. And so, right, six feet, a twelve foot fence is very large. Mm -hmm kind of variance request. Right. I don't know, I haven't been sitting on the board for as many years as some of my counterparts, but do you know what the largest variance we've ever granted on a... How old do you think I am? Well, <laughs> I'm just, I was saying that as politely as I could, Dan. Yeah, well, 
didn't quite work. Like that, so. <laughs> Andy, do you know? What, the I biggest? mean, do you have any point of reference on what the largest kind of variance? Because six feet, a doubling this yeah, is a, it's, it's very a, significant. It, it is. It's we, 100% I, I know variance, that we, yeah. some folks have asked Andy to. Uh, yeah, typically, it's it, eight, eight foot. Eight, eight feet, feet is. You know, That's the only thing I remember. <laughs> right, and I, or, or uh, Andra, somebody asked the specifically RIT, about yeah. the RIT one down by the quarry, which was really That's designed to keep the deer out and stuff. That's eight or nine feet, I think. That was eight feet, too. Eight feet? Okay. So there you go. It's uh, 12 feet. If I could feet. raise my house up, I would <laughs> yeah. to make it so the eight yeah. feet would work. But, I mean, there's the only thing I can do is put up a fence. So uh, I have two questions. So um, I, you mentioned greenery before. Um, it seems to me if if you and the neighbor could work together on maybe what they call a, a double deep, which is two two rows of offset greenery, um, some type of evergreen. It might take it a year or so to grow in, depending on the size you put in. But that I mean, have you considered that as an option to asking for a hundred percent variance? We we both have have spoken about it, uh, the neighbor and I. Um, and we we tried to work together on trying to get some plantings in. Um, he did, and he did put yeah. evergreens in. Yeah, he and he also did put some evergreens in. Um, but there, there's also other. I don't know. Did you write anything down and with other stuff? Yeah, down? they have the application. Okay. Um, I mean, you mentioned safety. Um, they they do shoot guns quite often off their porch and and I just wanted to make sure that my kids are safe and we're all safe just in case one ricochets that's why the wood is thick on the fence that would prevent you know anything from happening um, they have a lot of animals they put up since we've talked with them they've put up fencing to keep them out um, but we have had goats butting our guests and, and in the backyard, and we haven't had any issues uh, as of recent. In a while. In a while, yeah. Um, but they have a lot of animals, and, mm -hmm. and they're all they're all kept nice now. Um, so. So so just a, a couple of questions, if I I, I don't want to interrupt. You. Please. Um, what if anything did you do uh, from a technical, mathematical, scientific nature to ascertain that you needed this fence? to accomplish your purpose mm. at the height it is now? Or did you just, obviously you're, by the way, very talented folks to be able to do this. <laughs> Thank and you. I don't know, I don't want to insult you by saying, did you just eyeball it? Or did you engage in some sort of, because I'm wondering why it has to be 12 as opposed okay. to eight or six because or 10. Because still see into my house if it's shorter. By any degree? Directly into all the bedrooms. Okay, so so you you've already talked about hey I think all we're talking about here is three feet we'll see in a few minutes I suppose but if that's the case is is the problem solved if it's nine feet is the problem solved from your standpoint that's that's what I'm asking I mean you don't know or I don't think so I I think that there would almost be no need for a fence because then the privacy there is none um, the the three feet makes all the difference because the the windows are about three, four feet, mm -hmm. and, and that negates the whole purpose of the height of the fence. Okay, so that, I guess that's what I'm asking. So, so. I, I, as, as far as the privacy, sorry, Dan. And, no, no, and no. Being able to see into the windows, how, how is it, I, I'm struggling with how that's different than any other housing situation. I mean, if I if I open my blinds in my house, my, my windows in the front, and I can guarantee you that the, the people across the street would be able to see in, into it. So most houses are not as close as ours with a front of a house to a backyard. Usually houses are set up in a, a more residential setup where houses are side by side, where yards back up to each other. But their front of their house with all their windows on every room the the faces are faces ours and it's angled directly to our bedrooms and to the backyard, which is why we both wanted some type of privacy um, and we want to respect each other's privacy. Andy, have you been out to the property? Have you seen the, the sight line? Are we, how, how extreme is the slope that we're talking about? Um, I mean, I would guess there's probably a six foot elevation 
difference, roughly? Um, oh. Probably a, about eight, eight or nine. Yeah. Okay. Is, is this picture that's depicted in in your the, of the fence that's depicted in your application yeah. is that 12 feet right now? Uh, the variation it variates from 10 to 12. Meaning, because it's even the it elevation is sloped board. itself, board. so it's up higher. I'm assuming that part is six. Um, the one all the way by the cherry blossom there. Yeah. That right there is about six feet, where the cherry blossom is, and and, and right there you can actually like this. you can see their windows up top there. Um, if we were to add just two more boards, then the, the windows would be covered, and that whole elevation to the top area, which you're probably not seeing in these photos, that is substantial. The, the hill is, is a, one of the largest hills. Uh, there's a cell tower because of the, the, the slope on the property. So I just to clarify, the currently in code would be the part of the fence that's near the cherry. Yes. Tree Correct. blossom, what are we calling that? What Correct. is that, a bush? That's six foot, yes. um, okay, so that's six. And then as you go down, that is 12 right now? The highest ones. The highest we one. We tried to make it look nice, you know, and not like a... Like a wall? And you want to add even more? No, 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 no. Oh. This no, no, is no, just no. what we're asking This is, this is what it would stay They like. want to keep what's there with their Okay, bodies. I didn't know if you said to add more no. boards to make that side 12 No, the, the feet. part that's six feet there, um, I, I'm saying if we were to add a few more boards, uh, it could be from six to but, eight feet. Yeah, but that's okay. I think that part is o okay because yeah. our bedroom is yeah, up it's, more. It's that part right there is okay. It's mostly yeah. over more where the, yep, yep, in there. And I believe it's about um, where the where the fence goes from staggered. That's about forty seven feet, and then that transition to the transitions to about uh, another fifty feet or so there. Um, so you're looking at just under 100. And the part that blocks the view from your house to their house is more the vertical pieces. The Correct. horizontal ones don't really Correct. impact the view from the house. It's more the vertical ones. They're just the only ones that... Just maybe the first section of the, ver of the horizontal ones. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just, just and the And then after section. that, it's yep. just going up. And, and um, as the hill goes up, the... I think you said your plan was because we don't, you know, want to, we want to give them privacy for their backyard because once you're up in our backyard where the kids play on that tree house thing that we have, you can see all of their backyard and, you know, we want to give them that privacy. So we are bringing the fence all the way up the fence line, which I think you discussed with our neighbor. Yes. But it's the height's not going up with the hill. It's just going to keep, you know what I mean? The hill goes up, mm -hmm. but the fence is just going to kind of. We, we agreed off. to have it like six to eight feet. At so, that point. So the part of the the request, I just want to, yeah. you don't need 12-foot fence for the entire no. fence. No. no. No, 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 Do you know how many feet you need for 12 feet? Um, probably about 60. 60 feet out of Out of 100? If, if, it's, if it's finished, all the way to the taper then. Uh, all the way up to the top, it is probably a about, let me just add the, have it all in my memory here. Um, well, that property line's 254 feet. About 140 from end to end. So it's 140 feet is what you have the fence, and out of the 140, 60. 60 ish, yeah. 60 ish is, is what we need just for the privacy. And you said that it looks like it's really actually 200 and. Well, the whole property line, whole that, property line, line that, that line, that line yeah, that goes up to the We're not planning on that high. No. We just outlined that, that high, area. highlighted area. It's probably half of it. Or yeah. less right, because that's much showing less, 254 feet. That's where you're getting the yeah. 254 yep. frame. So. You guys have lived there about seven years. Yeah. Yep. You told me today, uh, and the neighbors live there. Oh, you, you you bought it at about the same time, right? They a couple were like months. About six months before us. All right. Yep. So, um, and you said there was a fence there before. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. Tell us about that fence. What what was, was that made a, of? How high was it? Um, it was just a see-through. Uh, it was like three. Chain the chain link no, fence or. The, uh, yeah. the, guy we bought the house from built it. Like a wood rail. Yeah. A wood rail, uh, yeah, a split rail, yep. 
Okay. All right. So that obviously no privacy there either because yep. it's only three feet and it's split rail. So, mm -hmm. okay. But we just followed the the sp exact spot where that split rail was. Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, all right. Anybody else have any other questions? Not at this time. All right, we may have some more. Everybody over here? I, I may have a few more, but yeah, yeah wanna... that's fine. Um, all right, I don't see anybody that's called in with comment. Oh, oh let me let me ask this. Uh, it may seem obvious, but other than you and your neighbor, uh, is anybody else going to see this fence? No. no. I mean, you're driving by in Atlanta. What's the speed limit there? 45? 45. 45. Oh, you can see it past, past it by the house. Yeah. Yeah, you can't see it from okay. the road. From the road, you can't see it at all. Right. Okay. Uh, let me ask you this. Um, let, let's say we say no, all right? Or let's say we say it's got to be eight feet. Is it anything more complicated than just taking some of the boards off and cutting the, the, the studs off with like a sawzall or something I, like I'd that? I'd probably have to take a chainsaw to the whole thing, yeah, and, and cut it down. It's, it's not, it, but it's not going to be... It's it's not going to cost you money to to no, bring it into cost, that compliance. That's our privacy. Yeah. yeah. And then trying to figure out a, a different solution. Have you considered other solutions? We've tried. Yeah. With the greenery or oh. with both both neighboring yeah. greenery. Okay. All right. So then we'll ask anyone in the audience that cares to speak about this. Come on up. Sure. Good evening. Hi. I'm Jay Beth, or Jay, uh, neighbors with the Sobolewskis at 3410. Um, so he kind of laid it out for you fairly well. Um, we both kind of agreed that it would be nice to have a fence between us. Um, one thing, just right off the bat, actually, the tallest points are over 13. Um, I measured like 13.2, 13.3, uh, not 12. So when we first discussed it, he was like, hey, you know, I'd like to build this fence. I was like, hey, go for it. That'd be great. Um, so I said, look, well, I think he brought up that he'd like to be taller. I said, well, I'm fine with that. Um, six feet, I can understand. Tall person can look over that almost, uh, especially given the slope, which I think, yeah, five, six feet is probably fair between our two houses over maybe 75, 80 feet between our houses, something like that. Um, so I said, look, if you want to go like eight, that'd be fine. Uh, and he mentioned 10 or 12. I said, nah, I really don't want to be looking out my window and looking at a wall. I mean, it looks like Fort Penfield right now. Um, and so I, I told him, I'm fine with you building it taller, uh, but 10 or 12 feet just really isn't okay. And that was before the project had really started. I think he might have had his posts in um, I don't recall exactly, but there were no fence boards up yet. And so through to the, the discussion, it was stated clearly from my perspective that 10, 12 is too tall. Um, <clears throat> so it, it really does look kind of an eyesore, especially from our side. Um, he put the horizontal support boards for those vertical boards on our side. And they're actually just scabs from the sawmill, so they're they're milled off pieces. They're still round with bark on it, stuff like that. Three of them. The top one is at about nine feet, and um, so it just really looked kind of crummy from our side. And then you got the two different styles, which um, he mentioned. I didn't like the look of it, and I understand preference is not something necessarily to be considered. He can kind of do what he wants as far as style. However, the combination of raw materials and the unevenness and the fact that it was built out of code by putting the scab pieces on our side on top of the fact that it's 13 feet at the tallest points and to be fair yes it does go up and down so in the one part so it does vary anywhere from like 10 some are 12 and yet still taller some are 13 2 is what I measured um, and then Going up the slope on that left side over by the cherry, 
Yeah, it might be like six or seven feet over there. Can't remember exactly, to be honest. But when I'm looking out my window now, it's like literally like, <laughs> like some kind of uh, 1700s fort <laughs> to repel the Indians or something. And you, um, do we have any pictures from their perspective? I don't have any, no. Okay. I did uh, after seeing this and after having many attempted conversations with them about it and not being super successful with trying to work out a plan that would solve both of our concerns. I ended up planting, oh, I don't know, maybe 20 trees or so um, from an old Christmas tree farm. It cost me a significant amount of money just to try to camouflage this thing. <laughs> um, I, I know he's going for an artistic look and everything, but again, the scope of it is just, again, we've got this setting of trees and woods and all that, and then as to his point, you look out our front sunroom and now there's this giant wall. Uh, I did not bring any pictures from our, our side. Um, and right now, especially, it's nice because we've got a nice big maple tree in between us. So it fills in nicely with branches and leaves and then combine that with all the trees I planted. It does camouflage it, um, especially in the summer months. But again, it, I just feel like it really detracts from the value of the property. We've had a lot of friends and relatives that come and just kind of ask what's going on, what is this project? Um, it looks incomplete just because of the it jaggedness is. of it, it things like that. Or um, again, just the magnitude and especially in the winter, you can see it from the road because again, it's so tall and large and there's no greenery. So I actually had a friend drive by Atlantic. He's like, what are you doing back there? <laughs> So it's not me. Um, but in any case, my wife and I feel it's uh, a bit of an eyesore being that large. Um, the privacy issue, I understand. I felt like eight feet was reasonable because when we look out our sunroom or our first story uh, windows, you actually can't see over eight feet. Um, when he was describing his purpose for building it so tall, he said he thought I would actually appreciate it because it gave us so much extra privacy. Then he actually started explaining why he wanted it so tall. It was because he didn't want to see us to be able to see from our second story into his backyard. And so his stated purpose to me was that he wanted to be able to make sure that my kids who have bedrooms up here, when they look out the window, can't see into his backyard. And I said, well, <laughs> that, that's nice if you have that kind of privacy, but this just isn't the, the lot for that. You bought a lot with a house next to you. And um, in any case, I understand the, the desire for privacy. My backyard is, is quite private, especially in the summer months. It's wonderful, but adding a 13 foot tall wall, uh, fence seemed excessive to me. And ultimately, because we couldn't work out a solution that would meet both of our needs, I ended up bringing it to the town so that we could try to sort it out. So Thanks. for the record, I'm sorry, um, yes, some are 13, but Andy was, when he came over, we were cutting it down to 12. We just haven't done anything yet. And his side is unfinished because we paused everything until everything was situated with the town. Mm -hmm. So yes, and then he went ahead and planted all his trees. So we're happy to make his side finished if we can get to it, but we paused everything until we we had everything situated with the town. We didn't want any conflicts to arise. Right, so we just so paused everything. We just stopped. So, and so Andy, Andy knew we were cutting those tall pieces down. Right. Further. And there was maybe like three, four boards. When you and say off the mill that way. When you say his side will be finished, what do you mean by that? Well, because he said that his side looks like the scabs, the or whatever scab word pieces. Is. Yeah. It's because we hadn't finished that side yet. So, so what he's describing as scabs, you're saying would go away if this this were allowed to continue. Yeah, we just haven't I, ha finished it because we wanted to. Right. Of cutting so, time. so I guess let me ask you. What would it look like from his side if you were Same to Same as this it? side. I was okay. going to put more boards on both sides. Okay. And make it a double dog ear fence. All right. So, I mean, that certainly addresses one concern, I guess I'd say, that it would be the same on both sides, right. not have the scab side. Yeah. Well, I, I think, the, I think the, the point of it being a 12-foot palisade 
um, is part of the, I mean, regardless of whether it's finished or not, it's still a 12 foot wood wall. So, oh, it's a completely different issue that you just you're talking about the height. I was talking about how it how it looks with those uh, scabs from his side, so right? And side. you know, just based off the town code, I know that it's pretty minimal, but I know the finished side, yeah, those horizontal boards are supposed to be on the builder's side. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's it, it does make it look less nice, <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's not maybe our main concern, honestly. Our main concern is the height, but certainly if the finished product didn't have those boards on there, that would that would certainly be nice. Yeah, okay. And, and it also sounds like even if this were six feet, it sounds like you wouldn't be all that happy with just the way it looks, that, that oh, style. Oh, that's just fence. a taste thing. I wouldn't have built it with two different types of fence, but yeah. that's... Again, that's just a preference thing. Well, aesthetics is a consideration. Absolutely. For us. If I had my way. Well, from I, everybody's I, perspective. And I've, I've had a lot of, again, friends and family comment on it. And we've had some that like the one fence better and some that like the other fence better. Um, so it, the oddity to me is that there are two different style fences. Um, and that, as a professional contractor, that actually irritates me. <laughs> just my OCD type, type thing. Um, so I have a that's just a preference thing, but um, that that combined with the height thing, yeah, it, it's okay. You know. I just have a question for him. Uh, which style do you like better? Uh, personally, again, that's actually about split with the people like my wife and I. I think we might disagree, and several of my friends and so forth have disagreed. I personally, I think I like the staggered. My wife would really love it if it wasn't staggered but she likes that side better um so because your you side had a could, lot of your side could be either one with this type of fence okay um i i think my wife and i like the up and down one okay. uh, but again if we had a preference it would not be staggered like this but i know you actually like it like that that was your artistic vision mm -hmm. and that's I've, fine i've um, seen i've seen it at clients houses before yeah so the the Styling, you know, if we had a vote, it, it, you know, it'd be tough because again, we've got multiple opinions within my own family. Mm -hmm. But certainly, the one consensus is height. And then, if he's trying to maximize height, um, I think being even at whatever height is uh, end up being allowed would would make sense. But Wouldn't that be if you like want to have it staggered between the maximum that you allow and whatever, that again, I guess that's up to them. But to meet the need of privacy while maximizing what you allow even would make the most sense. But again, that's that's not my call. Okay. All right. Anything else from the board for uh, Mr. Koenig? No? Okay. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody else in the uh, audience care to speak about this? No? Okay. Um, all right, we can move to the consideration of the uh, seeker if we want. Uh, I can do seeker first. Sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's the easy part. That's the easy part, thanks. Uh, all right, so from a seeker standpoint, this is a type two requiring no further action. I'll second. All right, so a motion on the seeker to declare it a type two requiring no further action. Uh, and a second on that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So I've heard both sides of this. I feel like I'm in a jury here yeah, <laughs> listening to both sides. In a sense you are. You know, honestly, 12 feet is really high. I was going to be somewhere in the nine foot is where I felt comfortable. I'd open that up. That's that's my thought. Even that is pushing it, and I would be open to, given that we've never given a variance greater than two feet on this. Yeah. Even nine, and, and it would be... I, I get what you're saying. I, I, from the aesthetic standpoint, I, I see your vision. I get the split side of it. Mm -hmm. I would definitely want the other side to be finished mm -hmm. um, as part of that. 
I'm between eight and nine, and I'm just, I would. Is this situation unique enough that we can, because someone else is gonna come in and ask for a nine foot fence. Once we, once we set the standard, someone else is gonna come in and say they want a nine foot fence. So the question becomes, is this situation unique enough that we can put a limitation on why we would grant nine here versus the maximum eight we've done in the past? Yeah, I, my answer to that is, I think so. Okay. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of unique aspects about this situation. Um, somebody might argue otherwise when they come in with the next application. You're totally right about that. That is a consideration Setting for us the precedence as well. for... Absolutely. So that's why the question of what have we granted before is, is relevant. Um, go ahead, Matt. Can you pull up the street side through Google Maps, Andy? I drive by this house every single day. I've not seen the fence, but I've also not been looking so, for it in the middle of the winter, so much, I, I don't. <laughs> too much time on your phone. No. <laughs> All right, so that, that berm, for lack of a better word, right yes. there in front. So it's all the way in the back corner. So if, if it, Andy, this is questions for you. If, if they built up or brought in dirt and built up and then put the fence on top of it, what is considered the fence? From the dirt. From the dirt? Yeah, it's from grade. So if you change the grade, the fence height is measured. It's the, the height of the fence material, the wood material from the grade that the fence sits on. So they could build like a little hill? Um, so my neighbor and I actually spoke about this. As long as you don't impact so, drainage. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about elevating a portion of the property and building, and you can you can ask him this, um, about two feet, and then the fence itself wouldn't look as tall. But it would still stand as tall. But so it, would, it, would, it evens out. Yeah. But they're saying that technically that wouldn't. That would not. That that, that would that, that would lessen the variance. Like if we said you could have an eight foot fence. Let's say that that's it. You build four feet, <laughs> four, berm, feet. four feet, and there's your 12 feet, but you only have a two foot variance. But yeah, we've, we've actually done that before. Yeah, that's, I, at the same time, you can't impact drainage point. and other things right. like that, of where course. unless you get those other of impacts course. that yeah. you have to yes. That would Realize. require uh, our fill permit department would have to right. review that, the grading, you know, the, the added fill and that sort of thing. Yeah. Is that something that you would be willing to consider as an alternative? Mm hmm. Yeah. What would you have to do to accomplish that? Bring Take this dirt. down and bring in dirt and put it back up? No, just cut the bottom off so that the boards oh, wouldn't so rot and just add some dirt. Mm. And bo both him and I both have equipment for the properties that, that we can. Is that set? I mean. How, what would engineering need in order to make that determination? Would they need formal plans? Um. I'm not sure that it would have to be designed by uh, an engineer or anything. Um, they, I'm not sure exactly what they would need, but I mean, they would, enough information to ensure that there aren't going to be any significant, you know, drainage impacts and um, erosion and things yeah. like that. You, you, you'll be come on back up. You might as well. And and the drainage, um, I installed over 5,000 linear feet of French drains through the property. All the water disperses into those drains immediately after a rain. Um, that helps a lot with drainage, and then it's funneled uh, along this. You can kind of see it from there, actually. It's funneled along that the the electrical pole, pole there, and then across to the street. Um, and and the uh, if we were to add a little bit of dirt there, and then maybe come down a little bit, so that way we're respectful for both parties involved here. I think we'd both be happy. Uh, okay. Um, I, again, I don't want to, you guys, I don't want to interrupt. No, I mean, it's, that's what I was hoping for is some solution that would kind of. Well, so, so um, I, I, I want to ask you and you. Yeah. Uh, is, does anybody ha hold on any hope that there can be a solution that the three of you come up with, or are we beyond that? Now, I'd be no, there's, there's definitely, a, him and I have a pretty decent relationship still. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying yes, you have hope. Oh yeah. How about you? Um, I, I think there's a chance. <laughs> I, I think there's definitely a chance. I'm, I would be happy if that was the case. 
Um, uh, good. The, the solution of, of adding soil was discussed between us uh, after it was built. Um, when I tried describing the issue that I was having, and I presented the option of, hey, if you were to bring in two feet of soil on my side, a nine-foot fence would only look seven feet tall. So I actually was willing to compromise at nine feet before we got into the whole town issue. And I said, if you built, you know, if you bring it down to nine and bring in two feet of soil, that kind of compromises where you're getting a nine-foot fence where originally I only said eight was okay. And that's still three feet taller than what the code allows. <clears throat> and we kind of tossed around that idea, kind of agreed to it. It never really happened. I ended up planting all of the, the pine trees. And so now the issue would be that because the fence is directly on the property line, um, uh, all my pine trees now are near the fence, within two to five feet of the fence, because they are kind of staggered like that. So adding soil on my side is not an option I would entertain at this point. So if he wants to add soil to accommodate um, his project, it would need to be on his side at this point, starting from the property line and sloping up to whatever height that he wanted to build it up to. Um, the the working together on my property and stuff like that has, has been rocky. And the drainage and stuff like that that he mentioned, a lot of that drains onto my property. So it's just been a lot of minor tension things. So I'd be happy if we could work something out that genuinely does uh, meet their needs or desires. Um, but I, at this point, don't want work being done on my property so that he can accomplish his goal. If he wants to build up soil, he's happy. You know, I'm happier for him to do that. It just needs to be on his side. It would impact his landscaping significantly. As you see, there's a lot of stuff on his side as well. <clears throat> but if he's willing to move that and do whatever he wants on his side, that's totally his prerogative. So I would have no issue with that as long as the end result is not 12, 13 feet, whatever, of fencing. Again, six, eight feet of fencing on top of a four foot hill. Again, that, that's up, up to you guys and him. But um, as long as it's not impacting my property at this point. Well, I, I you know, given what we've just heard in the last few minutes from board members, the staff, and the applicant and the neighbor, uh, you know, maybe we should table it for a month. That's what I was going to recommend. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, uh, I don't know that we need a site visit, but I would encourage everybody if you haven't had a chance to get out there, get out there. And if you want a site visit for the board to go out, we can. And I wonder if you would allow us to go on your property. And I kind of tiptoed around there a little uh yeah that'd be fine if you wanted to um set up a time with me i'd be happy oh I, so, we wouldn't just come yeah, knock yeah, on yeah. your door well, because one of the things that we talked about and i think he actually came into my sunroom so he could see out yeah so yeah. if you guys want to do that or just outside yeah. yeah i'd be fine to set up a time with that yep okay you want to make a I make a motion to table. Second. <laughs> uh, Second. I just want to be clear on what I'm, what are we looking for in the table? Well, one thing that I would ask for is if you can make an effort, I'm not asking for you to spend a lot of money, but it would be nice to have some um, oh, evidence, shall we say, that the height you want is the height you need. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't know what that entails, um, but somebody, we do that with signs a lot. The height, the sign's got to be that, why does it have to be that high? Mm -hmm. And people can come in and say it needs to be that high, so when you're driving at 40 miles an hour, you can see the letters. I get that. Um, it'd be nice to have something like that here. And, and um, something that would be really great that says with every height we add, um, the the view is blocked X percentage, so yeah. that that lets us know is eight feet good enough, is nine feet good enough, that sort of thing. Okay. If you can get it, on the, I'd like to hear his comment on what I brought up. That their stated purpose to me was to not be able to see their backyard from the second right. story. Didn't seem logical to me or reasonable. But it, am I misrepresenting that 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 was one of the goals? Privacy is our goal. All privacy. Especially, you know, for the kids. I mean, if we have company over, um, it because your kids are, are that much higher, and I just, if we open the blinds and we don't have our clothes on, it, you know, it, 
they're going to get just all privacy. You know what I mean? It's at, it's, at this point, all privacy is my, is our. There's concern. there's kids involved, so I just wanted to make sure that that everybody is, you know, going to be okay. Yeah, I, and and you've made that clear, and that's totally understandable. But before we uh, take the vote on the tabling and we move on to the next matter, I will say, just as a comment. 100% variance is a very large variance. Okay. You guys, uh, not, not don't take this the wrong way, but I'm just pointing things out that I'm sure are in their minds as and well we as are, mine. We totally understand that, Dan. You know, yeah. we do have, I believe we have a unique situation. We're not in a call, we're not in yeah. a neighborhood setting. I, and I said that already. You, you, you bought the house knowing the yep. different levels. There were many trees there first. Yeah. And there, there can be even more trees perhaps. Yes. We'll, we'll see, but just the reason I'm saying these things to you is not because I'm signaling how I may vote, yeah. but I want you to understand uh, that it would be very nice for you to try as hard as you can to come to some solution. I have a question for him. Um, would you be okay with, if I cut the fence down below and I cut a little bit off the top and put a nice row of boulders along that edge so that way it matches what we spoke about with the other, you know, and just kind of have a line of, of, of boulders with the dirt up on my side against it, make it look like let, let, let him Let him think about that. The, He's uh, got to talk to his wife. Yeah. He's got to be real here. <laughs> so, so keep the conversation going as best you can. If it, yeah. it, by the way, the you come back I next month and The problem dirt say, on the bottom is all his animals. Like his dogs are in our, they just got a new puppy and twice the other night is in our backyard. I, okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't so know if you, animals you guys, are going to dig If you through. come back in a month and say we did our best, yeah. we did our best, we can't, then it's our job to vote. Yeah. And, and, and we'll do it. But uh, if we if, can resolve this between us and then come to yeah, you. Yeah, they're really, you know, this isn't, other than the precedent thing, no one else is going to see this. But uh, somebody's going to eventually buy your property, somebody eventually is going to buy your property, yeah. and the variance will run right. with it. Yeah. So we have to think about that as well. Okay. Yep. All right, so we have a motion to table and a second. Any further discussion on that? I'd like to add to have um, the engineer, town engineer, go out and take a look. Just to see if they're going to be putting dirt and boulders. Is there any? Well, I think you have to have oh. a plan for the engineer to first resolve without sending them out just to look. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Regard whatever whatever steps are necessary. Just make sure that's part of the tabling that that happens yeah. as well. At some appropriate point, no question about yeah. it. The the last thing I'll say before I call for the vote is, a month goes by like that. Yeah. So keep that in mind as well. All right. Motion to table in a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you. No, it's not easy, I but we appreciate the effort. Yeah. Thank no, you. Much. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. No, I appreciate it. No, I was you. Yeah. Do we have no. <laughs> you are free. You are dismissed. Yes, you, you need to write You're an essay at the end. <laughs> hear the rest. There'll be, a, there'll be a test when you get back. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Number two. Ian Cookman, McMahon LaRue Associates, 822 Holt Road, Webster, New York, 14580. On behalf of Anthony Imburgia, 1270 Creek Street, LLC, requests approval for area variances under Section 250-14.3 of the code to allow a proposed building with less setbacks than required under Section 250-5.7-D3 of the code and less parking than required under section 250-7.7-D of the code at 85 Sovereign Drive. The property is currently or formally owned by 1270 Creek Street LLC and is zoned general business. SBL number 093.15-1-2.116. This is application number 24Z-0018. Thank you. Okay. We could have names and, yeah. and addresses. Sure. Uh, my name is Ian Cookman. I'm the civil engineer with McMahon LaRue Associates representing Anthony Imburgia. This is Sam Imburgia, representative of our client. Um, these guys own the parcel to the west of our subject property, right on Creek Street. They run their um, businesses out of this existing one-story masonry building. Um, they purchased this uh, lot behind them to the east. Uh, at 85 Sovereign Drive. <clears throat> um, so what we're looking at here is uh, a 
potential subdivision plan ultimately with our schematic colorized in the corner. The red lot line there is a proposed subdivision line. So that is not the current limits of the lot. The current limits of the lot actually runs through the building and through that southern parking lot. So we're making um, <clears throat> an attempt here to minimize our variance request particularly with parking and uh, the side setback of our proposed building. So l let me t interrupt you at this sure. point. You were at planning board for sketch plan last week? Correct, yeah. And, and what happened there and do you uh, envision any, at this point, any significant changes to your variance requests as a result of planning board action? Yeah, great question. So, um, there was unanimous vote um, to approve a sketch plan uh, for this project, and our goal is to get our variances here and then apply for planning board preliminary final approval at the end of the month is our deadline for that. Okay. Yeah. So you don't see any, if I'm understanding you correctly, any significant changes to these variance requests? If everything goes as you think it will at planning? Yeah, we're prepared to lock in our variances at this point. We ran some grading and stormwater, so we're pretty comfortable with our parking lot layout and the uh, position of that building as it's presented okay. here. Yep. We, didn't, we didn't get a uh, memo from planning board, right? No, the, I think the intention is that they were gonna provide a, uh, a sketch letter um, at the next meeting or after the next meeting on May 23rd. Okay, so just uh, obviously you're gonna give your presentation and that's great, but I'm gonna make a motion to table this pending receipt of that. And um, when we come back next month, if we have a letter from planning board saying, hey, we're okay with the variances, that will help your cause. Doesn't necessarily guarantee it, but it will help it greatly. And we do take, table matters before we start the public hearings. So uh, we already have one tabled, but if uh, you, you guys would be number two on the agenda then. So I, I um, but go ahead, I don't wanna cut your presentation short. You, you have, uh, it's nice to hear that you're making efforts to reduce the variance requests, but you certainly, you know, you have several. Um, so tell us, tell us why you need them. <clears throat> Yeah, so if, if you look at the uh, sketch plan here, you can see the setback lines um, that are kind of hidden uh, within the building and to the parking lot to the north. Um, those setbacks uh, reveal a lot that's otherwise undevelopable. Right. Um, so <clears throat> I think, you know, there's a strong case for setback variances here. Um, I think we've made, uh, good effort here by adjusting the lot line. Um, you know, we're also applying for a variance for parking, so, um, you know, they go hand in hand. We can do more parking, but we would need more variance um, and vice versa. So I think we've hit a sweet spot with setback variance and um, minimum parking to um, address uh, my client's leasey requirements. Um, to give you an idea, this building here is gonna be developed for a physical therapy um, practice, um, and it's gonna be run similar to a health and fitness, but specialization with physical therapy uh, clientele. Um, so the, the leases are, are lined up, they're scattered throughout Monroe County, and they wanna consolidate into a, a new facility here in Penfield. It's a great location and uh, opportunity for them to do that. Um, I think the use of the, the um, applicant here is, fits within the character of this district here. Um, and that's, that's the story of the, of the site. Do you guys have any feedback or? Well, so a, uh, I, I think that most, if not all of these requests are made necessary um, by maybe a couple of things, but the size of the building is one. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you, you, you obviously have progressed a great deal with your prospective tenant. Why does a building have to be that big? In other words, asked another way, if you shrank the building, 
the variance requests would likewise shrink. But if it doesn't serve your purpose, it doesn't serve your purpose. So that's my question. Why does that have to be? That's there? exactly the reason. You know, they came to us with this request. And, yeah. And based on their needs for um, individual rooms for treatments and such, and then also a larger area for, you know, the uh, uh, the different types of physical therapy that they provide. Um, there's basically like a gym area. So the square footage is really driven by their needs and they are consolidating with another practice. Um, so that was, you know, we are working to accommodate, you know, okay. single tenant, uh, low impact on the uh, neighborhood, uh, Pretty much the setbacks, although seem significant, really are, uh, in my opinion, not negatively impacting any any surrounding neighbor or, uh, you know, we have, uh, as far as the uh, you know, parking, um, pretty much, and, and the road uh, is, is what, you know, the, the areas that we are uh, asking for the variances for. Can, so. can, can you uh, give us a little bit about the, the, the neighbors that, you know, w wouldn't be uh, adversely affected by it? You know, right. Who are they? What are they? Okay, so to the, um, to the west is uh, 1270 Creek Street, the building that uh, Ian had said, you know, we have a, a, a few suites that are rented, but also our family has some businesses that we run uh, out, of, out of that area. So that parking area um, is the one to the west. Uh, to the north. I'm terrible with directions. I'm sorry. Okay. Which, what am I looking at? To, to the left of the building. Okay. North okay. is up. The one that says one story? Yes. That's uh, the building so. you're talking about? Yes. You so own that building as well? You, correct. correct. Okay. Right. And so up, up to the above it is uh, Benicare, and that's their rear parking. If you can see, there's like a, a bit of a, a swale in the middle, kind of where it says proposed adjusted lot line. That, yeah, you can, you can see in between. So that's their, their back parking that, you know, is, is rarely, you know, half full. Um, if you go beyond that even f to, to further, then it's um, the storage uh, facility. It's just the, that kind of like dotted line to the right of, of the green kind of triangle area. So that's just another parking lot and to the right of that is their um, facility for all their storage. So as you can see, those those three areas, and then on the bottom coming around, that's basically the road that circles it, um, Sovereign Drive. And who's on that over there where there's a parking lot? To the right then? Yes. That's uh, McCarthy, the, the, the rental. Ten, the rent, the rent, rental. Yeah. rental. And I'm sorry, you have two proposed parking lots as part of this building? Correct, yes. So we'd, we'd have um, an area that they can to access the building from both ways, and, and that's part of their physical therapy, you know, uh, thoughts of not a lot of travel depending on what area they're going to in the building you know for people that are having problems with mobility so like enter the north side or the south side of the building right. that's what they're thinking right. and then right so that was kind of our thought it, 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 it I don't um, they were hoping you'd see it the same way where it's, it's there's really not an impact to any neighbor that could be um, you know, put in a, a position to where it was uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, so. I'm trying to ascertain that the closest residential home on uh, Penn Webb, but... Uh, right. It's got um, number 42 yeah. down there, yeah. right in the corner. Uh, so... Yeah, that's, yeah. That's there's a close. bunch of trees and stuff. Right, right, right. And I'm sorry, can you, with the cursor, Andy, tell me where the this building is? But right. in the right, on that right on that curve. Right, right where the, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where it will be. Yep. Correct. If approved. Um, all right. And are you aware that we, uh, this board, at some point granted at similar variances, right, Andy? Is that fair to say yep. to another development that just never proceeded? So yes, actually, and that was kind of part of our thought when we looked to purchase this, was what was granted and and the use. Actually, they had uh, provision in for you know a, a large trucks to be able to get to the right. area, and, and and so. Our assumption, you know, was that if that could be approved, something with this type of use would be even more palatable. On the parking, just we're talking about. I'm 
was thinking parking. Uh, how many patients do you know would they be able to see at a single time? Mm. That I don't have the exact number of, but. Uh, I mean, it's a big building, so I didn't know. I, I, I mean, think maybe um, something like maybe 20 people at a time. Yeah, that, that, that certainly will uh, be relevant on the issue of the parking barrier. Yeah. So I, I, if you could get us that info in the interim. I get that information for yeah. you. Um, like how many staff and doctors would be there at right. a single time because they would each drive their own car? Yeah, employee, and employees and clients right. or so patients. So yeah. what I know about them, actually, I've been actually going there for myself for some physical therapy. It, they have three or four locations that they actually have around the city, though, that they travel to. So there's really only maybe a handful of providers. They're just going to different locations to see people uh, at this at this time. So I, I'd have to really get the numbers. I, yeah, and that's right. maybe something to just include is how many employees, providers, right? You know, people who are answering phones, whatever that sure. is. How many people would be? And you know, then how many patients at the max? Yeah, like I, was I just want to know maximum. I think maybe the typical and the max. So yeah. if we looked at the floor plan, could who was? that they showed because that would kind of give you treatment areas if, if we looked and if we could zoom in um, there isn't uh, it's a huge open space there I'm yeah, assuming this, that's that, the that gym the, the gym area and How, yeah, they do a lot people... of you know basically you know walking people but if you look maybe, at the treatment areas seven, there's one two seven, yeah seven. there's there's not all that many uh, treatment areas so I, I would think that's going to um, you know, Pearson starts in a treatment area, work, walks, comes back. It doesn't look like there is, you know, more than seven or eight areas. So um, that's okay. why I was, you know, somewhere around. I would think the max 20 and maybe so you got 20 you know, 10 staff. So I, how many parking spaces do we have? We're proposing 33 parking spaces. Right. And zoning code requires five for each 1,000 square feet. Uh, for office <laughs> buildings, um, which would equate to 44. So that's the basis of our variance request is requirement of 44 proposed 33, just as a baseline. Um, we presented the, this concept to, the, to your leasee, the, the client, and they felt that this was more than adequate to provide their operational requirements and for staff and Clients. And you can't have larger parking area because of the green space, the coverage? Yeah, we're, we're right there on green space. Well, then you would need a variance for right. the green, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I know we just did Seeker and then we tabled something, but typically we don't do Seeker until so. Uh, I, I'm going to make a motion. I don't want to cut anybody off. No, I'm good. I'm good. And again, I didn't see anybody with comments. So I'm going to make a motion to table this for the reason stated. We'll take it up next month at, uh, before the public hearings. But whatever info you can get us, as you've talked about your tenants' needs and why the variances. Yeah, get a confirmation on what their thought is. For Great. And I think, uh, I think I, too, I would like to hear something from planning board saying absolutely. they are, yeah. Yeah. you know, in support of in support of these variances because this is, in a sense, this is what they think will be the final plan as opposed to turning yeah, out changing I everything. I don't think the planning board's at the point where they can, because they still have to go through site plan review. Mm -hmm. um, this is just a, a sketch review that they're they've had before well, the planning. So this board. might take a little. If long. I can just... they are generally supportive of the the sketch, right? Uh, but they still have to work through the details for you know under the site plan application. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. What what I would like to avoid, and maybe Andres was getting there, is um, I'm not looking necessarily for a planning board to say. Uh, we uh, are supportive of granting the you guys granting the variances as opposed to them saying we're okay with the building where it sits the size of it all that stuff and then you know sort of let us decide if variances are that, appropriate. That's basically what they did say that day. Yeah, and, and they'll they'll give us a memo yeah. or a letter to that they were, effect. They had, had said they were going to send a letter that week, which yeah, looks like maybe they because it doesn't make sense for us to grant variances and then have them the planning board shrinks the building or. Uh, yeah. 
it's yeah, so, so that's though what happened. They were they were set with everything, but they says we we don't want to say anything further until you get your variances. So you see, really, I'm, they I'm, said no. that, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. So okay. now now we're back here and and you're, we're taking it back. Yeah, but you're well, you're getting a lot of positive feedback. <laughs> so. You got some homework to do anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll make the motion to table. For I'll the, second. Any further discussion? Aye. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was anticipating the question. Yes, all those in favor. Aye. 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 All right, see you next month. All right, thank you. Yeah. Who, who's, who's missing next month? Just Me. you? Maybe we should start a little early. Yeah, we, we're already a getting a pretty big agenda. So pay attention to the starting time, fellas. Okay. What day is if we that? Can. I don't know if there's something before this sometimes. Yeah, you know. We've done early before. Yeah, we'll see if we can work it out because I, you know, yeah, it, it's a big agenda already. Okay, <laughs> number three. John Perry, care of American Promotional Events, 4003 yeah. Helton Drive, Yeah, Lawrence, we need Alabama. an application like this now. 35630. Request a recommendation of approval for the issuance of an itinerant vendor license under section 162-6-E1B and section 162-E2 of the code to allow the sales of sparkling devices at 1601 Penfield Road. The property is currently or formerly owned by Penfield TK owner LLC and is zoned general business. SBL number 138.08-1-2 point slash PLZA, application number 24Z-0019. Okay, uh, may we have your name and address, please? Hi, Amanda Gump, and it's 35208 State Route 126 in Carthage, New York. Okay, George is gonna walk you through here. So, uh, a detailed application, much appreciated. Um, I believe we may have, I don't know if we've directly spoken with you in the past, but this is certainly a bit of a deja vu, I think, for, for all of us. <laughs> um, so, a couple of quick questions to start. This will be identical to setups you've had in previous years. I took a look at the drawings and the renderings. It doesn't seem like you're doing anything different this year. Correct. Uh, and you anticipate the same amount of, of sales crowds, um, walkthroughs as that you've had in the past. Yes. Gotcha. And the tent placement looks like also it'll be exactly in the same place in the parking lot it has been in the past. So now this location is going to be re-new to us. Um, we had it back in 2021. There was a different vendor that had 22 and 23. So we will be back here. Um, so it's different than what we had um, in 21. But it may be similar to where they were. Um, yeah, I looked the at last, last year's. years. And it, yeah, it's it's the same. Okay, yeah. different different vendor. Understood. Okay, um, so there's a couple couple of additional um, questions. There shouldn't there will be no external lighting or anything like that. It'll just be the the signage as as part of the listed as part of the application. Correct. The um, only lighting will be inside the tent. Gotcha. Uh, any any music playing, noise, anything like that that you no. expect? Probably laughter, but that's it. Gotcha. And um, you will be doing the, uh, the the kind of fire safety at either end of the tent for fire extinguishers and things like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Gotcha. All right. Those were the questions. I have. I have a couple of things to walk through on on conditions, but I want to give the rest of the board a chance to take it away. Take it away. Gotcha. So um, I'm going to run through a couple of series of questions here, which I've answered for you. But feel free to chime in if you would like to add something to them. So we can we can. Uh, I want to be sure all your input is here. Um, will the proposed create any risk of danger or danger to persons and property? I've said no. This vendor has had these setups in the past. They've got established policy, policies and processes, and this shouldn't present any dangers or issues. I agree. Gotcha. Uh, will the proposed created increase? It would have been bad if you disagreed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah that, that, would, that would have probably been a showstopper right there. Yeah. Um, the, the the proposed will create an increase in, in the vehicular, vehicular traffic, uh, or interfere in some way or manner with the pedestrians. No, you've had these set up in the past. That parking lot is very large. It's far in excess of what the vendors currently there need. So it should be no issue from my perspective. Correct. Um, 
the proposed would have any would have a detrimental effect on the adjacent property or interfere with lawful enjoyment of the adjacent property no again you previously set this up in the past been no impact no no change um, I would make a note if you're aware that on Tuesday nights they do have a very a very significant size um, um, a kind of classic car set up there. It's on the other side of the parking lot, but you probably might want to be where I don't know if that was in place when you were here in 2001 or it not. It was not, so thank so, you for that. Yeah. Um, so we might, uh, we might, Catherine, Christian, we might want to add a, a, a condition on there about keeping in mind to be respectful of that, of that uh, setup as well. Uh, will propose create noise or litter? You said no, there'll be no noise. Right. Um, in the past, they've had a container set up to be able to to uh, for you know for litter refuse I'm assuming you'll do the same this time yes okay so let's run through a couple of conditions the applicant is permitted to erect a tent on the subject property and sell sparkling devices as defined in part 225 of title 9 of the New York CRR within such a tent from June 20th 2024 through July 5th 2024 yes. the applicant shall obtain a tent permit from the Penfield fire marshal and pay the appropriate fee the applicant shall obtain an inerrant vendor license from the Penfield Town Clerk and pay the appropriate fee. There's a lot of fees. Make sure you got your checkbook. <laughs> uh, the applicant is permitted to display the following signage during the sales event. A TNT bunting on the display tables within the tent identified as sign 730473E in the tent signage placement rendering provided by the applicant. Uh, one TNT firework sign on each of the four sides of the tent identified side number 730474 in the tent signage placement rendering provided by the applicant. And then one additional sign at each roadway entrance to the Panorama Plaza site identified as sign 730411E in the tent signage placement rendering provided by the applicant. The approved roadway entrances include the three entrances to the plaza off Penfield Road and the two entrances off the Panorama Trail South. No other types of on-site or, or off-site signage associated with the event will be permitted. So any questions, concerns with the signage? Um, I just wanted to clarify with regards to the bunting. Um, you mentioned on the tables within the tent, are we able to bunt around the tent posts on the outside of the tent? Uh, My personal opinion is you can bunt wherever. You bunt away, but um, <laughs> so Christine, can you add that they'll put the bunting on the uh, poles as well? Bunting anywhere. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, we might want to. Within reason. We <laughs> I would say as as depicted in the drawing. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the applicant shall comply with the applicable requirements of the New York State Uniform Fire Prevention and Building Code, the New York State Energy Conservation Cons Construction Code, the Penfield Town Code, and any applicable country, county, state, or federal requirements. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, and then I did put an additional one here that the applicant will adhere to all previously stated conditions from previous applications uh, that were approved. So in other words, if there's anything that I missed on this list, that Andy or, or uh, Christine are aware of, we make sure that those are also covered. Absolutely. Things like, things like the trash receptacles are available, that the fire equipment's in place, those types of things. Absolutely. Um, now, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, one thing I didn't see, and I'm not sure if my permitter missed it, but the container, um, we would like to put a container on the property as well to store the fireworks in overnight. Um, is that something that I'm able to request. Where would it be in relation to the um, tent? So right in the picture below where it is showing, um, like where it says port john and um, that, it would be south of that. It has to be legally 20 feet from the tent, so it would be right down in that area. Gotcha. Andy, so, how would we need to modify the application for that? You just did? Yep. Okay. And I so I can provide a different site map if that. If you would provide a, a site rendering map, that would be great. Is that, is that new? What do you mean? The container. You didn't do that last time? So we had it previously when we were here in 2021. So it this um, site map is provided by the property owner, whereas sure. normally we create our site maps um, for the locations. So 
I didn't realize that he didn't have a container listed on this until I just saw that. Oh. So that's why I was not sure if. But you've used the container in the past. We always have. Um, we do at our Webster location as well. Um, so yeah, overnight hours, we lock everything up in there. There's the 1.4G um, stickers on all four sides of okay. it just to signify that it is um, explosives. And that other location's in Penfield, by the way, too. Just it so is, you know. yep. I know. I'm, I'm here. Fun. I see it uh -huh. at least once a year. I'm still mad about Valvoline. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, so we're, well, we're, I am mad, but I'm, I'm not kidding about that. But So we would just add that as a, as a condition that they will they will also install in containers for storage of the of the uh, materials mm -hmm. during the business, when business hours are closed. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and do we need anything to the signage that they'll have signs on all four sides of the container? No. Okay. No. Then that is all I have, unless anybody else on the board has nope. any questions. Um, no, and there's no call-ins or, shockingly, no uh, electronic comments either. Okay, so um, with your permission, I'll move to Seeker. Sure. So um, this would be a type two requiring no further uh, action. Second. Okay, motion to declare it type two with a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, for the merits, I would say we approve um, based on the, the fact that this is a, a, a known business. They have been here in the past. They've conducted this very well. They have a, very, a, ser a series agreed to the list of conditions a as outlined previously. Uh, so with all of that, um, I would recommend approval. I'll second. All right, motion to approve and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Good luck. Well, when you set up, um, it'll be right before the twentieth. So the tent's probably going to start to go up about the fifteenth or sixteenth. So. Thank yep. you again. Yeah, you're welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Do it. Maybe we shouldn't say good luck to a firework company. Like break a leg. I mean, wait, wait. <laughs> puts it out there. Yeah. Okay. He's gonna sit there and wait for you to ask. I guess I know, and that's why I'm taking my time. <laughs> Better than having. I hope you have a booming business. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope your sales are explosive. <laughs> oh, all right. You better hurry. <laughs> Thomas Marr, 58 Rossbrook Drive, Rochester, New York, 14625. Requests approval for an area variance under section 250-14.3 of the code to allow a front porch with less setback than required under section 250-5.1-F1 of the code at 58 Rossbrook Drive. The property is currently or formerly owned by Thomas and April Marr and is zoned R-1-20, SBL number 123.08-1-39. This is application number 24Z-0020. All right, may we have your name and address, please. Hello, I'm uh, Tom Marr. I live at 58 Ross Book Drive. Okay, perfect. So it looks like from your application, uh, we're looking for a eight by 32 foot front porch we're gonna be um, installing, or you're uh, proposing to install on the front of the home. Correct. Um, you said very thorough application, had good drawings, um, very clear. Uh, the only issue is you want to make it uh, eight foot deep, which is a typical depth for almost all porches because anything smaller starts getting a little difficult to move. walk through <laughs> or, or move anything in and out. Um, but you are currently 53 foot uh, from the setback line, and so you need a variance of, you asked for five foot, and I think when Andy went out site, uh, said maybe you should ask for five foot six because of the curve of the road in front of you, just, just to make sure. Um, so we are looking for a five foot six variance um, on that 50 foot. And um, looking at the drawings, didn't see there was any uh, undesirable change produced by this. It looks like um, you had five neighbors that actually sent a letter in uh, in uh, support of it, uh, so that's good. Um, and they don't seem to have an issue with construction or the noise or anything like that. So it was a very thorough uh, letter and document that, that they all signed. Um, we're looking for, if it, was there any other way to do this? Uh, didn't see any other way because really you have three foot to work with and you can't have a porch because it would actually probably be unsafe to walk through a three foot and able to get out of your house and into the house um, with something that small. Um, 
Is it substantial? Uh, not by our standards that I've seen here. Uh, five foot six is not a lot um, in terms of this. It doesn't look like it's going to impact the neighbors when you look across the streets and look look in various areas. Um, nothing really shows that. You know, you could stand in the front and say, is that three foot or is it five foot six closer? And I don't think anyone would um, object or really notice that difference. Um, any adverse impacts? Nothing was found uh, for the physical impacts or, or environmental issues for the, for the area. Um, while this is self-created, pretty much anything you do out front would be um, self-created for this because you only have three foot to work with. Um, in terms of... Uh, the design looks like it's going to be in harmony with the house right now and the neighborhood. Um, and I think even your neighbor's letters um, said that in support. I don't have any other questions besides that, unless someone else does. Nope. Lighting for the road. Would road? there be any, any lighting that would be? No, if there's any lighting, it would be inside the porch, maybe like some can lights above, but nothing projecting out onto the property. Perfect. Thanks, George. All right, I don't see any phone calls or electronic submission. There's no one else. Well, I suppose you guys could comment if you wanted to. So anyone in the audience care to comment? No? All right. Let's move to consideration. Okay. I'm going to move this to type 2 action requiring no further review for seeker. Second. I got it. Okay. <laughs> you guys are always Seeker so motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then on to the merits, uh, I'm going to move to approve this variance um, for all the uh, issues or for all the reasons stated before um, in terms of all the uh, points that I went through. Um, I think the only conditions that we'll talk about on here is, you know, you have to, you have to obtain a building permit, uh, meet uh, for your final inspection for your CFO, and uh, building and fire codes, you have to just, just have to follow those. Um, and besides that, I think we outlined all the um, findings already when we talked about this. So with that, I'll look for a second. I'll second it. I was going to let Laura, but... No, no, no. she's too slow. <laughs> too too slow. She got I one do for the one night. for the... <laughs> All right, so we have a motion to approve and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, good luck. Thank you. All right, that was the last hearing, so we will stand adjourned until our next meeting. Thank you all very much.